The Citroen 2CV. Well, the design brief for this car is well known. Something about taking a ploughed field across a pig uh, once a week to market with a fatted wife or something. I'm not entirely sure. And did they do a good job? Well, they certainly did. But it's a couple of bits which I think can be changed on the car which make it just that bit more suited for my needs. So this film just shows you kind of what I did. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of A Wolfie's Wheels. Um, it's a long time since we've looked at anything to do with Raymond, the 2CV, but I thought it was time we did. As I said uh, briefly in that introduction, uh, the design brief for the 2CV is actually well known and there's much more learned people on the uh, YouTube and the internet who will talk about that. Um, did they do a good job? I think they did an exceptional job. I mean almost three million units or about three million units, I'll put the figures up up here, in about a 50 year production span, sort of proves that they've got something right. Um, but there is one sort of area I think I can improve on for my needs. Um, it won't be for everybody's needs, but it's for my needs, and uh, I'll just talk you through what I've done and why I've done it. So if you watch the channel, you'll know that uh, we've also got the motor home and we go camping with the Greyhounds. Um, and what's that got to do with the 2CV, you might well ask? Well, last year, uh, we went on a couple of trips where we took the 2CV as well as the motor home. Um, so it gave us a little run around car to have while we were there. Um, and it worked really well, and our idea is that we'll do a lot, lot more of that this year. But um, we did find there was kind of a, a small problem uh, using the 2CV as a, a dog wagon, um, and it's to do with how the back seat works in the car, um, and how easy or otherwise it is to make a sort of a platform so that it's more comfortable for the dogs. So that's what I set about trying to address. So let's have a look at that. In its natural state in a 2CV, you don't really get much, uh, by the way, of creature comforts in the boot. And in fact, you sort of get this uh, boot with the spare wheel and the back seat. Um, but the previous owner who had this car did make one improvement to it, which I was going to do myself. Um, and that is to put sort of a platform thing across this area of the boot to, to make it a, a better place to put luggage, which is sort of this platform thing here, which just sort of slides in. and gives you a more um, impressive luggage space. Now, part of the design brief, as I said before, was to be able to put some sort of uh, bales of straw or animals or something in the back for your French farmer. So they made the seat quickly detachable um, by putting two um, little brackets uh, to attach a seat, sort of there and there, which you pull inwards. Um, a quick mod which was in the Citroen Club magazine the other day, 2CV magazine, is to put this piece of string between them. Oh, it's genius, because you just pull the string, those two bolts come in, and the seat then lifts up. And to get the seat out from there, you just have to wriggle it out. So you then just open the back door, remove a small pin there, and the door will open really widely. Now these doors actually just slide on and off. This hinge is a slide hinge. Dead easy to take the doors off, but I don't need to, because having popped the seat from the back, you just tip it forward, and out it comes. Probably a lot easier than I'm making it, but anyway. And in true Citroen style, it's usable as a picnic seat as well. As I say, design genius, absolutely brilliant. So as you can see from here, um, it leaves an enormous area, really. Um, but the problem is just here, is a, a big drop down. So when we've had the dogs in the car, had to build up 
this sort of area so that it gives them a, a nice level platform just for their comfort. Now, I guess if you're taking the pig to market and it's going to have a bullet through its head, it kind of doesn't matter, but our dogs are a bit different to that. And I wanted to make it a bit more comfortable for them. So I had to think of a way of filling that void um, and in a useful way. So this is what I did. So I was sort of thinking about how I could fill that void, which to make the, the whole of the back of the car sort of fairly flat to put dogs' beds on. Um, and still be practical, because if I just put another piece, big piece of wood over it, which I could do, uh, I'd have the problem of where am I going to store that piece of wood? So I needed to come up with a solution which would be usable slash transportable in the car, um, so I could have it with me, um, and also sort of be fit for purpose. So after a bit of head scratching, I come up with the thought of, why don't I just make the um, sort of platform part into two parts and then make it so that it could actually be used for another purpose. So something like a coffee table, so that when I'm sat on the 2CV seat by the side of the car having a picnic, I've got somewhere to put my coffee or sandwiches. So that's what I did. So if that's something that interests you, then this uh, video will give you the dimensions and uh, show you what it looks like and how I did it. So as you can see in the um, pictures, are sort of overlaying this bit of voiceover, um, the dimensions are shown and from memory, but I'm not going to say what it is because I've put the dimensions on the, on the thing that you're looking at now. Uh, the bit of plywood that I bought is 18 mil thick. Um, the reason is that my two dogs that I want to take in the back each weigh about 30, 35 kilos. Uh, and I wanted something that was going to be supportive enough for them. Anyway, that's uh, the dimensions of it. So the first thing I had to do was to get myself some plywood. Um, and in the end, I bought a, a sheet of 18 mil thick plywood because the dogs are reasonably heavy. Uh, and I wanted something that was going to sort of support their weight. Um, and the thing I struggled with getting hold of were some screwing uh, coffee table legs, which I could find on... Amazon but they were sort of 14 pounds for four and I need eight uh, and that starts racking up the, the price of this job and I thought I could probably make something myself which I, using old leftovers from Ikea uh, furniture builds I managed to do uh, when combined with a bit of wood I found in the garage. Anyhow um, the outline of the the job is, is shown um, on a picture sort of overlaying what I'm talking about now and I simply cut out the shape of the coffee table top uh, I made a cardboard template first in the car and then I just cut it out with a jigsaw um, anyway let's have a look at them in situ so here they are in situ um, perfectly strong enough for me to come in and, and, and sit on um, and loads of room for a pair of, of greyhounds. Um, so say, and what's good is that you can still use the seat belts to tether the dogs if that's your thing. There, you can see they stick out. Um, these aren't entirely finished at the moment because I want to uh, cover them in some fablon that I've, I've got, or vinyl wrap, I suppose, for all you young people out there. And I've also got some rubber that's left over from another job I did, some rubber sheeting, which I'm going to put on the bottom just to take any drumming noises away. But as I say, there you go, it's a pair of practical, um, convert your 2CV into more of a van kind of job, um, and a couple of coffee tables so that you've got somewhere to sit and have a coffee as well. So for the legs, I had these uh, brackets left over from an IKEA job that I did uh, and these bits of wood I had um, already in the garage and these feet were also left over from an Ikea job so it was simply a matter of screwing in these brackets so that I could then get these screwing legs which I also had to make using let's say leftovers from Ikea components and as you can see this is in real time they go in pretty quick and there's another one here. 
I realise this is absolutely riveting viewing for you all. Um, so bear with. These legs are roughly 50, well, they are 15 centimetres, which is the same height as, as this uh, plinthy bit. But as I say, you then get a very useful coffee table out of it as well. And there we have it, all uh, nicely in the back of the car, uh, as I said. Now, I do need to get um, the redoubtable Mrs. Wolfie to make a bag up to put those uh, legs in so they don't rattle about. And I might have to find a way of sort of securing these two together so they don't move around too much. But you know, you've still got a perfectly usable boot, um, just as you had before, and you've now got, um, as I say, make it into more of a van if that's your thing. Uh, keep your dog safe, as safe as they can be in a car like this. Uh, and uh, there you go. Well, I guess there'll be a few people out there who are kind of questioning the wisdom of taking dogs in a 2CV anyway, uh, just in case you have a crash. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're not the most crashable car in the world. I really wouldn't want to have an accident in it anyway. Uh, and if that sort of thing really worried me, I probably wouldn't even have a car like this or, or any other classic car. Uh, they're not really now for the crashability. Point is, um, if you think it's dangerous and unwise, etc., etc., feel free to comment, but it will be deleted. All that in mind, I do hope that you did actually enjoy the video. If you did, please subscribe, uh, press the bell icon and you'll know when a future video comes up. Uh, and in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you in a future edition of Our Walk with Wheels. Bye.